Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Got an announcement for you today coming from us here at What the World Needs is Jesus. We will be at Wheels Creek Assisted Living every Wednesday evening at 1.30 p.m. The address there is 1050 Airport Road West, Fort Payne, Alabama, 35968. We'll be singing and someone will be bringing the word. We'd like to invite anyone who would like to come help us sing or come listen to the message to do so. You may come to be a blessing, but I assure you, you will leave with a blessing. We ask if you would, please say a prayer for the residents there at the assisted living. If you need more information, you can contact Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Now today's message is coming from Brother Ricky Phillips. The title of his message is Die and Not Live. He'll be preaching out of 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. Then we're going to have a song from Eli Watley and Karen Crane singing, I Saw the Light. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell, turn on your notification on YouTube. Follow, like, and share us on Facebook. And check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now let this video be a blessing. Hey man, what a joy it is to be with you here today on What the World Needs is Jesus Broadcast. Excited to be here today, amen. Excited to be a Christian today. I just tell you what, I just love living a good Christian life, amen, because I know what, you know what, I know what the future is. I know what the future brings, amen, because I've read the Bible, amen. I've read the back of the book, amen. Listen, if you're a born again child of the living King, you're a winner today, amen. You're a winner uh, 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 you say, well, what if this happens, or what if that happens, or, or what if it comes down to, uh, uh, it's about my time to go. Listen, the, the old song says, I'm a winner either way, amen. I'm a winner if I go, or I'm a winner if I stay, amen. I tell you what, I'm a winner either way today. I win in, in any uh, case, any way you look at it, any way you uh, size it up, amen. I'm a winner either way it goes, and you can be too today. If you'll just call upon the name of Jesus Christ, it's our heart's desire right here at What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast that you find Jesus, amen, that you get a hold of him, glory to God, because he's there waiting on you. He's waiting on you to call upon him because he, he wants you to call on him. Listen, he's not going to make you be saved. He's not going to make you do anything. He wants you to call upon him. Amen. And get a hold of Jesus today and get him in your heart and get him in your life. Amen. And watch your life start to change. Glory be to God. It'll change. I'm here to tell you. Amen. If you don't believe me, just ask me because, listen, I've done that very thing. I've called upon the name of Jesus Christ and I've asked him into my heart and life. And, uh, and uh, he changed my whole life. Amen. He changed my whole way of thinking. Amen. I tell you what. We, we think we've got it, uh, got it made, got everything's all good to go and everything's this, that, and the other, but I'm here to tell you today, it's not, amen, it's not. We got we to gotta understand we need Jesus Christ today. We need Jesus, amen, so that we know today that we're born again, child of the living King, on our way to heaven, glory to God. And I tell you what, I wouldn't have it no other way, amen, wouldn't have it no other way. Listen, there's... There's people in the Old Testament. There's people in the New Testament. Amen. Uh, they serve the same God we serve. Amen. God was the same uh, uh, back in that day. He's the same right now, and he'll be the same for those people that come after us. He's the same God. Amen. We have to do the same thing. We had. They had to do the same thing we have to do. People uh, that comes after us will have to do the same things that we do. Amen. And that is repent. Repent. And call upon the name of Jesus Christ and watch him save your soul. Amen. He'll save you from an awful place called hell. Amen. A place that we don't want to go to. A place we don't want to wind up. Amen. Because there, that's a, 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 the Bible tells us that's a place of fire and torments. Amen. Over in Luke, I believe it is, it tells us the, uh, that the man, the rich man went to hell and Lazarus went into Abraham's bosom. The rich man went to hell and he said, just send me a, a Lazarus to dip his finger in water just to cool my tongue, just a little drip, just a little touch of water just to cool my tongue because we're in torments down here. And listen, he didn't say a torment. He said torments. 
Amen. In other words, in other words, there's more than just one down there. Glory to God. But I don't want to go find out what they are. I don't really care what they are. Don't want to know what they are. Amen. Because I know where I'm going. I'm going to a place called heaven. Amen. I'm going to a place where Jesus is. I'm going to a place where uh, there's a man that died for me on a cross. A man that hung his, uh, 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 was nailed to a cross, amen, for my sins, for the things that i done. Not just only me, but for you too, glory to God. For the whole world, amen. There's people in hell right now that their sins are paid for. It's already paid for. But they wouldn't receive Jesus Christ. Already paid for. A debt already paid for. A debt mean you can't pay. And it's already paid for through Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you love Jesus today? Do you even know Jesus today? That's the question. Amen. Do you know Jesus? If you don't, if you don't, right now's the time. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We fix and get into some scriptures here. And if you'll call on Jesus, listen, you'll understand these scriptures better. You'll want to read them. You'll want to get in there and understand and know what we're saying and what's going on. But I tell you what. I tell you what, Jesus loves you today. It don't matter what you've done, where you've been, or how you've done it. Jesus still loves you. Amen. The Bible says the only unforgivable sin is the blaspheming of the Holy Ghost. And if you're watching this video right now, you're not blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I would urge you today, right now, right now, not tomorrow, not next week, right now, to call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, the, the Bible says, uh, God said his uh, spirit wouldn't always strive with man. Amen. Well, we need to think about that for a few minutes. Glory be to God. We may not always have this chance. This chance may not always be there. Amen. You may get your chance and then you may not get another chance. Amen. Think about that for a few minutes. Amen. Get your chance. You get your chance. Listen, if you're listening to this right now, this is your chance to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Call upon him, amen. Let him save you. Let him, let him become part of your life, amen. Let him, let him uh, uh, be within you, amen. This is your chance, amen. And if you don't take it, listen, uh, uh, you may not get another chance. I don't know. You may get 50 more chances. I don't know. But you may not get another one, amen. So I'm telling you today, I'm telling you today, right now, just like old John the Baptist told him, repent, glory to God, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, amen. Listen, the kingdom of God is at hand, amen. It's here, it's here, listen, and we got to know that we know that we know that we know that we know that we're a born again child of the living king, and if you're not, it's time to change that right now, amen. It's time to change that right now. Get a hold of Jesus, glory to God. That's our heart's desire right here. What the world needs is Jesus, that we get, uh, uh, that we see lost people get saved, amen, that we can lead somebody to, listen, I can't save you. I don't know anybody on this earth that can save you. There's nobody here that can save you. You'll have to call upon the name of Jesus Christ in order to be saved today, amen. And it's not hard. Don't cost you no money. Just call on him. With a contract, in other words, in other words, call, don't come with that old, uh, haughty spirit, amen. Come with a humble spirit and call upon Jesus Christ. Listen, he loves you today. He loves you, and he would that every man in the world be saved, but they won't. They won't, amen, because they won't receive Jesus Christ. They just go right against it, but that's okay. Uh, uh, God gives us a chance. He gives us all a chance. He'll give everybody on this earth one chance at least one chance, and then from there on, it's his mercy and his grace that gives you another chance, amen? Thank God, thank God that he's long-suffering, amen? Long-suffering, uh, uh, because I, listen, I turned from the Lord and run and didn't do what I was supposed to do, and I could feel the power of God calling me, and I just wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't go that way. I didn't want to. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But you know what? One day, one day I realized, I realized that there's a place called heaven. But there's also a place called hell. There's also a place that's called hell that's in uh, the, the rich man was down there in torments. Amen. In torments, glory to God. Praise the Lord. And I don't want to go there and I don't want you to go there either. Amen. I don't want you to go to that awful place. I want you to be saved 
on your way to heaven, glory to God. Praise the Lord. I tell you what, I'm excited to be a Christian today. If you got your Bibles today, and I know you do, if you don't, just run and get it, amen. If you don't got your Bible, run and get it. I want you to read along with me, amen. I'm going to be in 2 Kings chapter 20, and the Bible says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amaz, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Boy, I tell you what, God's, has God ever sent you, uh, have you ever been to the doctor and, and they say, well, you're, you're going to die and not live, amen? You're going to die and not live. I have, I've been to the doctor and they say, listen, if you don't get something done, if something don't change, if something don't happen with you, if you don't get this, that, or the other, you're going to die and not live. Amen. Uh, uh, listen, whenever the doctors tell you you're about to die, boy, it'll change your attitude a little bit. Amen. When the doctors say you're fitting to die, it's you on this table, and you're the one that's got whatever it is. Uh, uh, amen. It might be cancer, and the doctor tells you, well, you've got cancer. Amen. You've got cancer. See, everybody hates that old C word, but I tell you what, God ain't afraid of that C word. Jesus is not scared of that C word, amen, because Jesus has a power, amen. Listen, there's power just in that name, in the name of Jesus Christ today, amen. There's power in that name. Listen, Jesus is not afraid of the C word, the old cancer word, amen. Jesus is not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of it. Listen, I've had it. I've had cancer. I've had a heart transplant. This old body's been through a lot of stuff. But you know what? Jesus has seen me through every bit of it, just like the three Hebrew children, amen. Listen, he didn't pull me out of a heart transplant. He didn't pull me out of this cancer. He jumped in there with me, glory to God. He got right in that fire with me, amen, and he walked through it. He walked through that fire with me, amen. Listen, he won't pull you out of it, glory to God, but he'll walk through it with you. Whatever you're going through, whatever's happening in your life, he'll go through it with you, amen. Glory be to God. Listen, he walked right in the lion's den with Daniel. That Daniel went right in there, and he walked right in that lion's den, and he closed the. Listen, he sent an angel down there, and the angel closed them lion's mouth, amen. Listen, he didn't pull Daniel out of the lion's den. Daniel got in a, 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 in a, in a comfort, uh, confrontation there, uh, uh, and he got in trouble because he was praying to God, amen, because he was praying to God Almighty, amen. And listen, uh, you can come tell Daniel, you could go tell Daniel he couldn't pray, and he'd just pray that much more, amen. That's the way we need to be today. Glory to God, they come tell me I can't pray, I'm going to pray just that much more, glory to God. The prophets done came to Hezekiah and said, Look, Hezekiah, you fixing to die and not live. The word from the Lord is you're going to die and not live. Amen. That's the word from the Lord today is you're going to die and not live. And he said, he said, oh, boy, listen, can you imagine uh, uh, somebody coming and can you imagine the doctors telling you that? They've told me that before. And it just broke me down. It just broke me. Amen. I just heart. Uh, uh, I was heartbroken because I didn't want to die, amen. Nobody on this earth wants to die, amen. We don't want to die. Our goal is to live, amen. And you know what Jesus said? The devil came but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly, amen. I take life. I'll receive that life. I'll receive that life and receive it more abundantly, amen. Not the other way, glory to God. You know what the devil has to offer Hell, that's just a plain facts. That's just the way it is. That's just the truth, amen. The devil offers you hell, and that's it. There's no more, amen. But Jesus offers you a place called heaven. He offers you a place where there is no more tears. There is no more crying. There's no more pain. There's no hospitals. There's no C-word cancer. There's no uh, heart transplants. There's no, listen, Listen, there's no uh, nursing homes up there. There's no assisted livings, amen. There's none of that stuff in heaven because we don't need it. We're going to have a glorified body, amen. We're going to change in the twinkling of, Paul said it's going to be in the twinkling of an eye, amen. We're going to change. We're going to get us a brand new body. I can't wait, glory to God, to get that brand new body, amen. While I'm here, I want to preach to everybody I can. 
Let everybody I know know today that even if it comes to death, glory to God, we're a winner either way, bless God. We're a winner either way it goes. Hezekiah had come to the point here. The prophet come to him and said, you're going to die and not live. From the word of the Lord, you're going to die and not live. You know what Hezekiah done? Boy, I, Hezekiah's a smart man. You know what? He was a smart guy. Uh, uh, Hezekiah said he turned his face to the wall. Verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord saying, now I want you to listen to Hezekiah's prayer. He turned to the Lord saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. In other words, Hezekiah didn't come to God in a in a in an old haughty spirit. He didn't come to God saying, uh, uh, "Look how great I am! Look at look at me and uh, look what you're doing to me and look what's happening." And listen, God wasn't doing that to him. God was just telling him he's fixing to die and not live. He's sick. It's sick unto death. Amen. He's going to die and not live. Hezekiah said, "Well, wait a minute, glory to God." He said, wait a minute, look what all I've done for you, amen. But he didn't come in that old haughty spirit. He didn't come in that old demanding spirit, amen. Listen, the last words of verse 3 says, and Hezekiah wept sore. In other words, he was brokenhearted, amen. He was broke down. And he come to Jesus in that contrite heart, in that humble heart, in that humble spirit. And he said, he said remember, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth, with a perfect heart. Have you walked before Jesus in truth and a perfect heart? Have you walked before him in, uh, 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 in truth and not doing things that you ought not do? He said, and have done that which is good in thy sight. Listen, what have we done with our life? Whenever we, whenever we get to heaven and Jesus, uh, uh, God opens them pearly gates and, Jesus, and God says, what would you, you do with my son's name that I gave you? Amen. My son that I, my only begotten son that I gave, let him uh, uh, sacrifice his life for you. What would you do with that? What would you do with that? Amen. How did you live? How did you live after you found out about Jesus and what he is and who he, who he was and what he done? And listen, what did you do with that? I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth. Are you walking before God in truth? Amen. And with a perfect heart? Are you walking before God with that heart that you just love? Listen, listen, God loves everybody and he loves you, but he knows what you're thinking. He knows what your intentions are. He knows the heart of man. Listen, whenever they went to, whenever they went to get David uh, uh, to make him the king after Saul uh, uh, betrayed the Lord and he went to get David to anoint David king, he went to, uh, he went to the house of David and all his brothers was there, but none of them was the one that God wanted. They all looked, listen, whenever they was looking for a king, they always looked for a big muscled up guy, a big guy that was a, a warrior, a, a big guy that would, uh, uh, that would take, you know, take on the war and take on the things that he had to do. They wanted a big muscled, a big strong guy, amen? But that's the outward appearance that's the outward appearance today or we listen we look at the outward appearance we look at the outward appearance when we go to get somebody to fill in or do this uh, uh half of us look at the outward appearance when we need to look on the inward appearance amen god looked at the heart god looked at the heart he knew the intentions of those men those young men listen uh, uh he whenever uh david come along david had the right heart amen he had the right heart for the job of king of israel he had the right heart, and God knew his heart, amen, and he knew the intentions that he thought of, amen, and he put David in there. But listen, here's the thing about this king and David. Uh, uh, it didn't happen overnight, amen. God had to get David ready to take over that kingdom, uh, uh, take over uh, uh, Jerusalem, and uh, God had to get him ready. 
God had to get him ready to be the king of Israel. Amen. And he had to go through these things. It didn't happen overnight. When they anointed uh, David king of Israel, listen, it took a while. Sometimes that's the way it is with us. Listen, God will give us something. He'll give us something or we'll pray for something. And it takes a little while to get things turned around, to get this happening over here to make this happen, which this happening will make this happen. And when this happens, it'll make us happen. You see what I'm saying? It, it just works all in sequence. God, that's why our prayers aren't answered instantly sometimes. Sometimes God has to get this moved around and that moved around and get this took over here and that took over here and this moved over here and this up here and get you have to go through this to get your heart this way and you have to go through that to get your heart turned this way. Amen. It don't happen overnight sometimes. Sometimes our prayers take a little while to get answered. Here Hezekiah is. He's at the end, amen. The prophet comes and says, Thou shalt die and not live, glory to God. Thou shalt die and not live, amen. And he turned his face to the wall and he prayed unto the Lord. See what the first thing he just done right there. See what the very first thing Hezekiah done. First thing we'd do is uh, 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 is start crying and moaning and and telling this one that and this one that and this one I'm dying and God look what God's done to me and God's done this and God's done that. Hezekiah done exactly what he should have done, exactly what me and you should do whenever we get some kind of news like that. Listen, that's bad news. That's awful news. Uh, a doctor call you up and say, look, I got your results and you're going to die and not live. Amen. You got two months to live. You got two weeks to live. You're going to die and not live. Amen. That's bad news. Hezekiah just got bad news. The prophet comes and said, you're going to die and not live, but he knew exactly what to do. Do you know what to do today? Amen. Do you know what to do when you get that kind of news? Do you know what to do when things get rough and things get bad? Do you know what to do today? Boy, I do. I know exactly what to do. I'm going to do exactly what Hezekiah done right here. Glory be to God. Hezekiah, then he turned his face to the wall, and he prayed unto the Lord, saying, he prayed. See, that's the first thing we got to do. We got to get that in our heart, mind, soul. The first thing we got to do is pray and seek the face of God. And he prayed unto the Lord saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and in a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Hezekiah came to him praying in a humble heart. He didn't come to him praying a, a awful, ugly, smart aleck. Uh, no, he didn't. He came in a humble heart. He came in a broken heart. Amen. That's the way we need to call upon the Lord Jesus. Listen, he'll listen to that humble heart. He won't listen to that old smart aleck stuff, that old ugly stuff. You can't get, you don't get ugly with God. You don't, uh, 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 you don't demand this from God and that from God. You come to him in a contrite heart. You come to him in a, in a humble heart, amen. And I want you to listen to what happens whenever you come to him in that humble heart. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out of the middle court that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Boy, isn't that something? I have heard thy prayer. Listen, when Daniel prayed in that lion's den, or, or when, he, when he prayed that prayer, uh, 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 he prayed for 21 days, amen. God heard the prayer the first time. The first time he prayed, God heard that prayer. The angels told him whenever they finally made it down there to Daniel on the 21st day, they made it down there and they said, look, God heard your prayer, the very first prayer you prayed. It just took him a while to get down there because of all the things going on. Amen. I have seen thy tears. Look, look right there. I have seen. Listen, we come to God with a contrite heart. We don't come to God with a commandment. We don't come to God with a with a uh, uh, ordering God to do this or do that. We come to God with a contrite heart. We come to God with tears. Listen, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, amen, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee 
and this city out of the hand of the king of Syria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. See what happened? He prayed. The first thing he knew to do was pray. The first thing we got to do today is pray. Seek God's face. I, it don't make no difference what's going on in your life. It don't have to be unto death, but if it is, what do we do? First thing we do is we pray. We get a hold of Jesus Christ. We call upon Jesus, and we don't come with that old demanding, commanding, uh, uh, the, the old spirit of you do, you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Listen, we don't tell what God what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. Amen. God tells us what he's going to do and what he's not going to do. We come to him with that with that spirit humbly, humbly, with a spirit of humbleness. Amen. And when we come to God with that spirit of humbleness, God listens to that prayer. He listens to that prayer. Listen, he listened to Hezekiah. Hezekiah said, look, Lord, I've been uh, pure in heart. I, I've tried to live right. I've done all that I can do to serve you, and, and I, I, I want to live. Amen. I don't want to die. And, and uh, uh, the prophets done told me I, I want to die and not live, and, and I, I've served you, and I want to be uh, uh, another. I want to live and serve you more. Amen. A, lot, a little longer. Amen. I can just imagine what was going through his mind, amen, and he turned his face to the wall. He turned his face to the wall. In other words, he got everything else off his mind. He got everything that was around him. Listen, it, he didn't care if there was 50 people in there. I don't know how many, they don't say, but he didn't care how many people was in there. He turned his face to the wall. He turned his face to the wall and got his mind off of everything else. And he said, oh, I beseech thee, O Lord. And you know what God done for him? God gave him 15 more years, amen. 15 more years. Listen, listen, I've been in that shape before where they told me I was going to die. Amen. I needed a heart transplant, and if I didn't get that heart transplant, that I was going to die. But you know what? I had a whole family praying for me. I had a whole family praying for me, and they was... Uh, they was calling upon the Lord and they wasn't calling on the Lord demanding him that he needed to do this or he needed to do that. They called upon the Lord with a, with a contrite heart. They called upon the Lord with humbleness. And they asked God to change that situation. And you know what? He changed that situation. That was 25 years ago. And I'm still here. I'm still preaching the word of God, and I'm going to preach the word of God until I can't get up no more, and then I'm going to have somebody record it while I'm sitting there preaching the word of God. Amen? Glory to God. I'll never turn back from preaching the word of God. Amen? I can say that with confidence. Glory to God. I love the Lord today. I love him today, and I know with whatever's going on in your heart, in your life, God loves you today too, and he wants to help you he wants to uh, help you do whatever. Listen, have you ever heard of the old saying, out of the heat into the fire? Amen. Hezekiah come out of the heat. Listen, he had just been in uh, a battle over there, and they, they took him. They was going to take him out, and God saved him. Amen. Saved the whole country there. Saved them all. He was in the heat with that battle, but he jumped out of that heat right over here into the frying pan. The, 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 the prophet came and said, you're going to die and not live. So he come out of the heat into the frying pan. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, our lives do that sometimes. We jump out of that heat right into the frying pan. We jump out of that heat and get right in the frying pan. It, it was worse then than it was when it was coming against him. Amen. Now he's personalized him out. He's fixing to die and not live. Amen. But God saved him. God saved him again. See what I'm saying? He saved him again. Amen. Not just from the old king of... Assyria, but he saved him again, amen, whenever it come down to his life, he jumped out of the heat into the frying pan, he jumped out of the heat right into the fire, amen, glory be to God, oh Paul, when he went to that island over there, he reached down, put some logs on the fire and the viper come out, Right out of the heat, the Bible says, the viper come out and latched onto him. Listen, that viper come out and it was a it was a, a poisonous snake. It come out and latched onto him. But you know what Paul did? Listen, right out of the heat, see, right out of the heat. Uh, Hezekiah just had come out of the heat and the old, old devil latched onto him. 
The old sickness latched on to him. But you know what he done? He shook it off. He got it off. Paul shook that old snake off and throwed it down. And you know what? He didn't even get sick. Amen. Here's, here's Hezekiah in the same way. He didn't even get sick. Amen. God gave him 15 more years. 15 more years, glory to God. And he'll do you the same way, amen, if you'll call on him, if you'll ask him, if you'll call on him uh, with a contrite heart and not a heart of, of uh, uh, do this and do that or, I, or else. God don't work that way, amen. He don't work like that. He works off of a contract. He works off of a humble spirit, amen. If you'll come to Jesus humbly, you can get out of the heat into the fire, amen, and then God will save you from the fire. Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. If you got a prayer request today, you can send a private message to facebook.com forward slash what the world needs is Jesus. You can call or text Brother Ricky Phillips, 256-630-1262, Brother Kenneth Crane, 256-557-2858 or Brother Harold O'Neill at 256-475-5854. You can also email us at what the world needs is Jesus TV at gmail.com. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord.